We have reestablished our connection with Governor Hochul. I apologize for the problem we had there. Uh, Governor, uh, I believe you're on the line. You just, just double check. Yes. Thank yes. you for yes, joining us. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about the impact this storm is having on New York State and how the state is responding. Well, it is a serious storm. We've been warning about this all weekend. We saw the forecast coming up the East Coast, and it has done exactly what we expected. It has been battering the coastline of Long Island with uh, very high uh, winds, coastal flooding. We haven't even have the high tide yet. I hit the city, particularly uh, saw some of the hardest hit areas where we lost the most power. And then certainly the Hudson Valley, which has been so prone to really serious floods in the last few years. We had the 1,000-year flooding event over the summer in, the, in Highland Falls. And so we have an issue uh, that's being managed now. We think some of the worst is over, but it really has been at least half the state under siege from Mother Nature with the, the pelting rains, the high winds, and the flooding that really is still a dangerous situation when people go into a vehicle and there's more than you know, three, four, five, six inches of water on the road, that vehicle can be so easily swept away and it causes you know all kinds of damage but also can result in the loss of life. And so we're trying to caution people that you can just stay home a little bit longer and I know it's a tough time for a Monday morning commute, but we really need people to heed those warnings and be smart before they head out into the roads. Governor, we're seeing pictures of trees down, uh, firefighters clearing things out, um, flooded out streets. Could you talk a little bit? I know more people stay home on Mondays and Fridays nowadays. Did that help you out a little bit? It certainly did. I mean, you go back to the pre-COVID years, we could have had much more uh, you know, much more damage done. You, you know, even a vehicle going out, if it's still high winds, then you have limbs that snap and they fall onto a vehicle and they can be taking down the utility lines and, you know, causing all kinds of jam up. So, yes, the fewer people on the roads is better, but even those who are coming in to commute, you know, this is just a morning to reassess. Can you just zoom in a little bit longer? With those who have to be there, we understand, but this is one of those areas where you know, we're glad it's not snow because this volume of snow would be would be pretty cataclysmic for this area. But I have to say, a lot of the state has been impacted. We have over 40,000 people without power. So, you know, those individuals, especially as someone who grew up in Buffalo, where we always had power outages, uh, you know, having little kids at home in the, in the dark, it is scary when the power and the heat go out. So we're trying to get the rescuers and utility crews activated. They have been Pre-position, which is our our philosophy, is get them out early, even if you don't need them. And so we've had over 5,000 crews that have been spreading themselves around different parts of the state. So some of the power is coming back on, but I, I know how hard it can be for, uh, especially parents or senior citizens on their own in the dark. At least it's daytime now, and hopefully we can most much of the power restored before nightfall. And Governor, you touched quickly on, you know, we're lucky that this wasn't snow, but it is mid to late December. We're lucky that there was a lot of warm air wrapped up with this storm system. I would think at some point this winter we get some colder air and hopefully we'll have a more productive snow winter this year than we did last winter. Is the state ready for that? Are you guys in the middle of those winter preps as well, able to have the, the salt needed for the roads, et cetera? I've had those meetings in the summer and multiple times leading up to it. So we're always making sure we have the stockpiles that we need, the salt, making sure that the blades are sharpened on the snow plows and making sure that we go through our tabletop exercises. Uh, we use the, uh, the, the Buffalo historic uh, blizzard in Buffalo last year with significant loss of life as another example, I mean, is the coordination, what it should be with the locals, who makes these decisions. So, so we are constantly learning, constantly evolving, and I'm really proud that we just stood up a, an enhanced a severe weather warning center in Albany that is able to monitor uh, not just what's happening with the temperature and the air coming and the um, rain coming down, the snow coming down. It's actually what's on the ground and what's happening on the grid. Are the sewers getting backed up? Are there limbs out there that are blocking streets? So we can actually have cameras positioned to be able to see so much more and to be able to direct people to respond where the need is the greatest. So we're really testing that out right now. But I think that's going to be an incredible enhancement because as governor, my number one job is to keep people safe and protect them. And if we can use technology to help our first responders, our local emergency management teams, our emergency management team that's been stood up all weekend in anticipation, then we have a better chance of just getting to it 
without any any loss of life or damage. Well, Governor, we know you're very busy. We thank you so much for making time for us and updating us on the state's response to this storm. Have a great afternoon. Thanks again. All right. Thank you very much. Be safe, everyone.